it's October and I'm showing you the trial I'm running here, the Dig No Dig, where we have two beds side by side with the same ingredients, same amount of compost in each bed, same crops growing in each bed. This is the sixth year now of this trial and we can see at this time of year all the second crops that um, are growing. I'll explain more about that in the next video. Here I'd want to concentrate on just the background to this trial and, and look at one or two of the differences that you can see on the soil surface and in weeds as well. So this dig bed, every December I get out my spade, um, take out trenches and put compost in the bottom of each. So the compost is about eight, nine inches, 20, 22 centimeters down under the soil every December. So we, we've got soil on the surface here. The compost is buried. Here, the same amount of compost goes on the surface. That takes about one hour, whereas digging and incorporating the compost takes about two and a half, three hours. So already there's a big time-saving difference with no dig. And then weeds is another fascinating difference where we find so many more weeds on the dig bed. Um, just looking at this bit of ground here where we've just cleared a crop that was French beans and they actually got a slight frost on them at this time of year. So many weeds and I also notice when I'm pulling the weeds there's quite a bit of soil comes on their roots. So I'm seeing lots of weeds here and on this bed actually there I'm only seeing one weed it's pretty much out of reach uh, but generally I do find there's a little one here uh, in fact, that's about the size of weed, I'd, weed I normally like to pull out. Um, it's good to get in the habit of weeding when the weeds are small. It's much easier. And they do normally come out with very easily with not much compost on their roots. And one more thing I'd like to show you is watering. And I'm going to take a water can and water each bed with the same amount of water in turn. And you'll see how it doesn't soak in so quickly where the soil has been disturbed. I'm now watering two gallons, nine litres, onto this area of ground here on the dig bed. So this is on the dig soil and I'm noticing it's basically a lot of this water is running off. It's not soaking in and it's not at all that this ground is saturated. It's had some rain recently for sure but we've had a dry summer and it's what I notice a lot that when we're watering these two beds the difference the the dug soil because it's partly because it's soil on top and not compost it rather caps over when you apply water the fine soil particles bind together and then the water doesn't soak in it's slowly soaking in but it can't keep up with that rate of input and I'm now going to water the same on the no dig bed and you will notice the difference. So now I'm doing exactly the same on the no dig bed. Two gallons, nine litres of water going on pretty fast. You can see it's quite a rapid dispense from the rose. It's fine by the way when you're watering to have the rose pointing downwards. Plants don't mind that, the soil doesn't mind that. And I'm noticing as I do this the water is just soaking in. There are very small puddles, but none of it's running off the sides, unlike there. So it's all going into the ground, and this illustrates beautifully how no dig is so good for drainage, for infiltration. And it underlines the mythology that's out there, the, the mistakes that are made because of this assumption that you have to dig to loosen and aerate and drain. It's the other way around. When you dig or disturb the ground, you break the structure. Whereas here the structure is all here and it's created by soil life and this is so well illustrated by how that water has soaked in rapidly and easily.